Hi there, yogis. Megan here with Yoga with Megan. And let's just dive right in. Come into child's pose. Take a moment here to pay attention to the weight of your forehead on your mat. And then perhaps you just kind of roll your forehead from side to side. Eyebrow to eyebrow. Nice. You can pick up your hands, spread your fingers apart, and actively ground down. On your next exhale, I want you to press every little tiny bit of air out of your body by pulling your belly button closer to your spine. And then take a big, full inhale. Everything expanding, every molecule in your body getting a sip of air. And then an active pressing out again. And then coming into your ujjayi breath. So you're gonna zip up your lips and breathe in and out through your nose with like a forceful exhale. Press up onto all fours and take three cat cow poses at your own time. So today's practice is being brought to you from Pinto Canyon Ranch. If you are unfamiliar, Pinto Canyon Ranch is super far west Texas at the base of the Chinati Mountains. At the end of your third cat cow, make your way to downward facing dog. So yeah, so I went from like far New Mexico in the middle of nowhere uh, to a part of Texas that is really desolate and vast and um, primitive and beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. <laughs> so we're going to incorporate some of the energy of this location into our practice today. Come to stillness. Go ahead and let your eyes close. Keep your ujjayi breath. And in your mind's eye, I want you to envision the West Texas desert. If you're unfamiliar, it's relatively brown with pops of mesquite green and some cacti. Lots of low shrubbery. Lift your right leg up. We're not doing our biggest best here yet, so it's really just about lifting through the right leg and then grounding down through the left. And just for a moment here, see if you can pick up your left hand. Just to see, right? It's early in practice. We're just kind of dialing into our balance. And then return back down, resettle all four limbs, and lift your left leg up. So same thing here, you're gonna root down through your right leg to get the leverage to lift the left. And then you're gonna root through your left hand so you can lift your right hand. And then release back down. Take a big full inhale. And then exhale, stepping your feet to your hands for a rag doll. And all I want you to do here is hang, tucking your chin to your chest, not worrying about how straight or bent your knees are, just being present in the history of your body. So this space, right, they've found stuff from the last ice age, uh, from primitive peoples from throughout time, and I keep thinking about like just the history of that 
And then it occurs to me that our bodies have a history. And so every yoga practice, we are like archaeologists, figuring out what is left in our body from the past that we want to discover and then maybe replace. Inhale, rise all the way up to standing to Dasana, arms overhead. And then exhale your arms down by your side, Samastitihi. Go ahead and let your eyes close again. And I invite you to ask yourself that question of today's practice. Like what parts of your physical body do you want to excavate today? What parts do you want to honor that are maybe historic and ancient? And then what parts are no longer serving you and maybe need an update? Inhale, rise up, lift up. Exhale, forward fold, back down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high push-up, pause here. So this is an opportunity to excavate, right? Do you believe that you're not strong enough to hold this push-up? And so your mind needs a little excavation to prove that your body is capable. Low push-up, upward facing dog or cobra, right? First one to practice, so take a moment here, play with it. And then downward facing dog, yes. So this um, Wild West area here is actually preserved by ranchers. Most of it is private land, 62,000 acres. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, bring your feet to your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up to Dasana. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, and then jump back, Chaturanga. Or step, your choice. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Yeah, there are parts of this kind of mountain valley base where the mountains are over 4,000 feet high. And uh, it's just something majestic to behold, right? Like, there's no cell service. I hope you don't get a flat tire. The roads are winding. There are no guardrails, and they're rock. So it's not like you're driving on the pavement, right? Um, just the very act of approaching this road makes you brave and adventurous. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift and fold. Rise all the way up to Dasana, flow like water back down, forward fold. Halfway lift, Chaturanga. Upward facing, downward facing. Uh, we literally packed a couple of gallons of water just in case uh, we got stuck out there and um, let me tell you, it's desolate. Like, no one would know where you were. <laughs> but I think that's part of the magic of it, um, connecting with primitive peoples whose dwellings have been in these mountains for centuries. One more time. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, bring your feet to your hands. Halfway lift. Flow like water. Fold over your legs. Roll all the way up to standing. Roll right back down to forward fold. Coming to your halfway lift. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog, letting your heart open. Downward facing dog, lifting your tailbone high. Yes. Ah. Coming into our sun salutation B now. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift and then fold over your legs. 
Rise all the way up to standing and then chair pose. So you're gonna sink low. Two options with the feet as always. Feet are either parallel or big toes touch. And then do what feels natural with your arms right now. This is your first one, so it's not necessarily about like pressing and wrenching your heart up, right? Like maybe you take your hands to heart center, maybe you bring your arms by your side. It's your choice. So part of what also occurs to me out here in this wilderness is that the plants that survive here, they are resilient. They survive on very little, but more than that, we came uh, during the blooming season for the cactus, and so they thrive. There are beautiful bright pink flowers and bright red and some yellows. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome, right, in all of this brown to have such bright colors. You're in your chair pose still. I know you are. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Upward facing. Downward facing. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, lift your torso, warrior one. And pause here, imagining that you are like the mesquite tree, right? So you are pressing your roots down into the ground to help stabilize you and offer you access to any little bit of water there is so you can thrive. And then flow to your other side. So that's high push-up, low push-up, up dog, down dog, or you just step back to down dog, however you want to do it. So you're just going to literally flow into the other side. So eventually here, you're going to meet me with your left leg forward, settling into your warrior one. So some of the yoga poses we're going to do today, I think invoke this concept of greatness, of history. So even your warrior poses, right? We do them almost in every practice and sometimes they just become like status quo. But really these poses are meant to invoke inside of you your inner warrior, like your inner primitive person who is hunting and gathering in the desert of far west Texas, maybe killing a mountain lion, I don't know. Go ahead and vinyasa back to your downward facing dog. Try to mirror what you did on the right. You don't have to, but try. There was a massive rainstorm out here um, recently, and so you can smell like it's like every leaf has opened up and is emitting a fragrance. So the mesquite smell is so overpowering and beautiful, and obviously I need more antihistamines. <laughs> I don't know how people back in the day did this. Anyways, we're going to really flow with your son B now. Be resilient. Be that archaeologist chip away at your belief that you cannot move maybe this quickly chip away at the belief that you cannot like make it through the whole flow i believe you can feet to hands halfway lift forward fold chair pose forward fold halfway lift chaturanga upward facing downward facing, right leg warrior one, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, left side, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, feet to hands, chair pose, come right into it, forward fold. Halfway, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, left side warrior one. Yes, I'm checking you. Are you listening? Chaturanga, up dog, down dog, right side warrior one, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. One more time. You've got this. Jump right into chair pose. You're going to be okay. Forward fold, halfway, chaturanga, 
up dog, down dog, right leg, warrior one, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, left side, warrior one, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, big full inhale and then exhale out of your mouth, sigh, whatever you need to do, let that go. It's so amazing how powerful our bodies really are. Coming back into your ujjayi breath. We're going to play with some vashistasana with some side plank. And the whole point of vashistasana is to find strength and balance. And I really think that is part of what this Pinto Canyon Ranch offers. Right, there is a balance of the universe here. There are hawks circling overhead. They're going to eat prey down below, maybe help manage the snake population. You know, it's just all working together. Inhale your right leg up for three-legged dog. One more breath. And then exhale, come to side plank with your right arm down. So you're gonna just drop your right leg and then roll onto your right hand and the bottom of your right foot. But then there's also this beautiful balance between like, the government and private citizens. Pinto Canyon is mostly owned by a private ranch and they are preserving this prehistoric land, making it available for us to drive through to enjoy, to participate in. You're still in your side plank. And then come back to downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up. And then exhale, bring it back down, rotating onto your left hand side plank. And so as you're excavating your interior here, like where do you need strength and then where do you need balance? Sometimes we can be too strong, right? Like those bodybuilders who can hardly wipe their own ass. <laughs> like they, they need a little more balance, maybe a little more flexibility. One more breath here. Downward facing dog. But then maybe sometimes what you need in your life is more strength. Right, maybe that is what will bring you into balance. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, come through to low lunge. So you're gonna drop your left knee to the ground. Bringing your arms up overhead as if you were in a warrior one. And really working through that left front hip flexor. So the ideal position of the right front leg is 90 degrees. But if you need to kind of um, seesaw back and forth or a little bit of threading side to side to really start opening up your left front hip flexor. If you have blocks handy, grab those. If not, um, just know that the focus here on our next pose is not on force, right? So it's more on power. So we're going to come to half Hanumasana, half splits. So you're just going to take the weight of your hips over your left back foot. So you actually want your hips still up high, and then you're just pressing into the top of your right leg. So the, the back of the right leg is the focus of this stretch. So if you just kind of sit on your left heel, you're not going to get that stretch. So the point really is to pull your tailbone behind you. And if you are unfamiliar uh, with Hanumasana, the whole point here is just it's a half split. That's it. If you can see that in your mind's eye. And Hanuman is a monkey. And you think about monkeys, right? They can leap and fly and jump from tree to tree. And so that's actually what this pose is supposed to invoke, is the idea of leaping great distances. And now I just want you to seesaw back and forth from your low lunge 
back into your half Hanumasana. So you're just shifting your hips forward and back. Forward and then back. Maybe your right knee straightens every time. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you kind of uh, shuffle side to side here, right? Like your job here, again, is excavation and exploration. What old holding patterns in your hips and in your psoas do you not need anymore? But paying attention, right? Like tracking your knee uh, to go perfectly parallel. If you've had a knee injury, that might be exactly what you need. And threading side to side will not be a good excavation for you. You know this, right? It's your body. And then coming back to your low lunge, downward facing dog. Nice. So you know where we're going already, right? We have one more side to do. Inhale your left leg up. And then exhale coming through for your low lunge. And pausing here, right? Figuring out with your right back foot, do you want your toes tucked or untucked? Do you need to maybe fold your mat over so you have a little extra support for your knee? And again here, excavating, threading side to side, gentle pulses forward and back. And then again to half Hanumasana. So the reason I said blocks earlier is you have a couple of options. I like to take blocks under my hands here to kind of relieve some of the pressure um, on that front leg. Or if you're really attempting to get into your Hanumasana, you can um, put that block under your front leg, under your straight left leg, and see about coming into a supported splits position. And then just imagine here, right? Like you are leaping over this massive 62,000 acre canyon. So you're some sort of like prehistoric primitive giant. I don't know. Just go with it. Let me do it. And then same thing as before. Coming forward, back into your low lunge, and then rocking back into your half splits. Forward and back. And coming into your low lunge, stepping your left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up. Bend your knees, stack your hips, scorpion tail here. All right, so it's three-legged dog with a bent knee. And I can promise you there are lots of scorpions out here. Coming from West Texas, this part of West Texas as a child, I know that to be all too true. <laughs> Coming back to your three-legged dog and then rolling into your side plank with your right hand down. So I want you to pick up your left top leg. You've got this. It's okay to be wobbly. You can even drop your bottom knee to the ground and then drop your right foot to the ground behind you and come into a wild thing. So it's different from flipping your dog in that your one leg is bent, one leg is straight. And then really using the outside blade of your bottom right foot to help launch your hips up and open. Your left foot is secure and firm on the ground to do the same. Invoking the wild spirit of West Texas. Come back to your side plank and then downward facing dog. Yes, I like it. Inhale your left leg up. Bend your knee, stack your hips, scorpion tail here on the other side and be aware, right? Like, What is your holding pattern? I always assume my left shoulder hurts because it does, so I favor it and I treat it differently, and it's probably contributing to ongoing pain, right? So I need to excavate that, I need to explore that. 
coming back to three-legged dog, and then rolling to side plank, left hand down. Pausing here for a moment of setup, you already know where we're going. Lift your right leg up, bend your right knee, drop the foot behind you, wild thing. So I think sometimes when we think we have information, uh, all of it, we act on it, and then sometimes we're creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Maybe my left shoulder wouldn't hurt if I didn't favor it all the time. Maybe what it's asking me for is more strength and more opportunity to be active. But because it hurts, I'm like, oh no, I'll, I'll treat you real special. <laughs> I don't know, right? Just again, excavating, asking questions of our bodies. Coming back to your side plank, here's the challenge. And then downward facing dog. Go ahead, drop onto your knees, shake out your arms. That was a lot of upper body happening over the last few minutes. And I want us to take that same Hanumasana side plank wild thing again. So just be prepared for those motions again. When your arms feel uh, ready to roll, come back to downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up, exhale low lunge. So your arms are gonna come up overhead and then shift your hips back, hands to the ground, framing your right foot, half Hanumasana. Inhale back up into your low lunge, exhale downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, opening for a scorpion tail three-legged dog. And then rolling onto your right hand, Vashistasana, side plank. Inhale, your top leg up. Exhale, set it down, wild thing. Inhaling your hips higher, reaching your arm. Back to side plank, we have control and power here. And downward facing dog, beautiful, yes. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, stepping through low lunge. Your arms are coming up on a full inhale. And then exhale, fold over that front leg. Your front leg, pardon me. Coming back to low lunge. Downward facing dog, lifting your left leg up already, coming into a three-legged scorpion tail. And then coming back, rolling right into Vashistasana. Top leg up, bend your knee, wild thing. excavating through the bullshit, finding some magical, prehistoric, I don't know, ice age, skeleton. Back to side plank, downward facing dog. Yes, yeah, I love that. Mm. I can't even imagine um, how old the dirt and the rocks and the, I don't know, it's just so cool, man. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift and take another forward fold here. Water behind the knees, ragdoll. Sway your torso, right? Let your torso swing like the wind in West Texas. All right, it kind of whips and howls through the canyon here, through the valley. I mean, breathtaking and terrifying. <laughs> I wonder if that's how men feel about some women. I don't know. All right, stop swinging, come to stillness, and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Nowhere to go, right? Really diving into this pose. This is part of the excavation. 
Is there a catch somewhere? I notice that my rolling kind of stops midway between my shoulder blades. And then all of a sudden my neck pops up, right? So it's not a judgment, it's just like a, oh, there's a catch there. There's something I should focus on. Plant your left foot into the ground firmly and inhale bent knee right leg up. Just a standing leg raise with a bent knee. Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee and twist. You're going to unwrap, unfurl your right arm so it's reaching behind you. We are going to be moving into a full dancing Shiva, but we're just not there yet. Right? We're heading there, so patience. And then unwrap, come back to center, arms overhead. Your right leg should still be floating. And then intentionally place it back down. Coming in now to your right foot, shifting your weight so your left bent knee can raise. Pull the toes apart of your left foot. This will help with your balance. Take your right hand to the outside of your left knee and then unwrap, open up left arm coming behind you. Being willing to fall. Right, as you're excavating, as you're twisting here, maybe you twist a little too far and you lose your balance and just come back into it, that's it. Untwist, come back to the center, lower your left leg, Go ahead and shake out your feet. We're going to come back into some more balancing postures. And come to Samasthitihi. So that's just standing at attention at the top of your mat. Let your eyes close. So the pose of dancing Shiva is meant to honor the dance of the universe. To honor the fluctuation, right? That change is part of life and that these fluctuations um, are actually what make our life. So um, just as this mighty desert was once covered in ice and now it has transformed into what we see today and it will transform again, um, so too do we transform. So open your eyes, set your drishti, your focus, Shift your weight into your left leg, straight right leg lifted up, as high as you can. If you need to bend your knee, you bend your knee. Take your left hand and wrap it on the outside of your right foot. And try to really press through your hand, creating an active twist, right arm expanding behind you. Ideally, right leg is extended straight in front of you. And you're twisting here. So this is part of that balance of the dance of life. You're balancing literally on one foot and you're fluctuating, you're moving, you're twisting, you're rotating. Your drishti is changing, right? You're not looking forward anymore. Maybe you're looking behind you. One more breath. And then unwrap as gracefully as possible, coming back to your center, samasthitihi. Inhale here and sigh. Shifting your weight now into your right foot, left straight leg lifts up. Grabbing your foot if you can, twisting your torso, dancing Shiva. Really let this pose evoke in you this idea of fluctuation that that is literally our lives. It's so hard to see if you're in the middle of maybe a downtime, um, that that, like that's your life. And there is still joy and pleasure, even in the pain. It's hard, but when we can do that right, uh, we have the opportunity to become a modern ranch filled with primitive dwellings. Untwist, come back to center, dropping your foot, shake it out. I want you to take one more dancing Shiva on each side at your own pace. 
So I'm gonna give you just a few minutes of play here. So go ahead and figure out, right, what is your best way to get into this pose? For me, sometimes it's easier to bend my knee, grab my foot, and then press into my hand. Um, some days I can straighten my legs, some days I can't. It depends how much running or walking I've been doing, how much sitting, how tight my hips are. So yeah, again, you're excavating here. You're seeing, oh, if I bend my knee and then I press two or three times, one, two, three, maybe on that third time, ooh, now I have extension, right? It's about that fluidity of the pose. Make sure, right, equanimity, balance, trying to manage on both sides exactly the same. Keeping your breath active. And even though we're calling on this like dancing Shiva, right, this um, dance with life here, like some of that dance should be joyful. So. I find that we tend to be really judgmental of ourselves in balancing postures, like we're supposed to be perfectly balanced. And if we were, um, I don't know, I, maybe we'd already be moving on to the next life, I don't know. So enjoy your humanity here. A few more breaths to play. Okay, coming back, samastitihi, feet grounded. Small tuck of the pelvis to activate your Uddiyana Bandha, your lower belly. Shoulders over hips, eyes closed, arms by your side, palms forward, fingers active. Be here now. Inhale, rise up, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high push up. Pause here. So you're a little bit warmer now than you were at the beginning of practice, and it's amazing how once you're a little bit warmer, how much stronger you are, right? So hold this. Notice what edits you need to make. Maybe you shift a little forward into your hands or maybe you need to press through your heels. Drop your tailbone a couple inches. While we're here, let's go ahead, take a side plank. Just go for it. Pick a side. Squeezing everything to your center line. And then just roll to the other side. Have flexing your feet, pulling your toes apart. Coming back to high push up, low push up, high push up, low push up, you're fine, high push up, and then lower all the way down, belly to the earth. Bring your arms by your side, put your cheek on the ground, and feel your heartbeat pressing into the mat. Notice your blood pumping. Bringing your hands up by your shoulders just off of your mat. Tent your fingertips. Lift your torso up. Shoulder blades squeeze down and together. Inhale, lift a tiny bit higher, and then exhale, drop your left shoulder to the ground. Look over your right shoulder. So you're really digging into the chest here. One more breath. Coming back up to center. Opposite side, this time pressing your right shoulder down.
everything is squeezing towards that center line of your spine. Come back to center, tap your forehead to the mat, and then come up onto your knees. We're gonna go ahead and take a camel pose here. So tuck your toes underneath you if you are not prepared for the full expression of the pose. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, wrapping your arms behind you, hands at the top of your hips. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift your heart up, open your throat. Deep, full breath. One more. Coming back up. Go ahead and take a child's pose here. So opposite direction. Arms overhead, forehead to the mat. Coming back up onto your knees, camel pose again. Same thing, inhale, arms up overhead, and then exhale, wrapping your arms around, right behind you. Lifting your heart up. Open your throat. One more breath. Gently raising all the way up and then folding forward into a child's pose. Downward facing dog. Inhale, look at your hands. Exhale, feet to hands. Halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to Dasana. Exhale, chair pose. I know this seems out of, out of sequence. I normally do these first thing. Bring your arms by your side like airplane arms and then press up onto your toes for drinking bird so really here like invoke in your mind's eye um, how birds kind of balance on the rim of things and then they tap their beak down to get some water everything is squeezing together on your back side as well as your front so your quads your thighs are squeezing but so are your shoulder blades one more breath Drop your heels down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. And take a moment here to notice, was that up dog different than the first ones now that you've done camel pose? Do you have more access to the pose? Have you excavated through some stuckness right to give you ease look at your hands feet to hands chair pose drinking bird be brave here try to get up on the tippy tops of your toes heels fully lifted sinking down lower in your knees even though your chest is lifting higher one more breath Drop your heel, heels, forward fold. Vinyasa to your down dog. I love this idea, right? All of these animal poses, monkeys and birds. Ah, oh, just dig it, connecting us to nature. One more breath in your down dog. This is your final down dog of practice. This is its own pose. And then Hop your feet through to come to a seated forward fold. Or drop your knees down, swing your legs around, whatever. You wanna feel the bones of your sit bones on the ground beneath you. And then you're just gonna hinge at the hips, tailbone shoots behind you, water over the thighs, chin to chest, forward fold.
Inhale, lift your torso up, arms overhead. Exhale, bend your knees, wrap your hands around your feet if you can reach them. Tuck your chin to your chest, try to drop your forehead to your knees. And then slowly walk your knees, your feet out and see if you can maintain contact, forehead to the knees. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But where there's a stuckness, where there's like a, oof, that's it, stop, stay there. Explore that. Mine is with my legs like three quarters of the way straight. All of a sudden my upper back says, ah, this forward fold is terrible. Which for a lot of people forward fold, they feel it in their low back or in their hamstrings. And so that's my excavation work, right? Like what am I holding in my upper back that makes a forward fold uncomfortable? Inhale, rise up, release your feet, both legs out straight, and then bend your right knee in so your right sole of your foot is uh, pressing against your left inner knee, so you're kind of in tree pose legs, and then fold long over your left front leg. I like to take my right hand to the outside of my left leg to make sure that my torso is lined up evenly, but again, this is your excavation. Maybe you seesaw a little bit, right? Maybe you try that right hand and it's too much, so you bring it to the inside of your foot, and then you take it back to the outside of your knee, or, you know, like we're playing with it here, it's fluid. And then inhale back up, straighten your right leg, bend your left leg, folding over again. And this idea of a non-static pose. Sometimes we do want to hold our pose and we want to be firm. But other times it's in that movement, in that fluctuation, that we find our strength and balance. Rise up, both legs extend out straight. Take your right leg now and cross um, over your left. So I want your right knee bent and your right foot flat on the ground. So your knee is pointing up. And then if you'd like, you can bend your left leg underneath you. If not, you can leave it straight. Sitting up nice and tall, take your left elbow to the outside of that right knee and twist. So your right hand can come to the ground behind you to help offer stability as you rotate here. Little Lord of the Fish makes me think, you know, there's all of this Ice Age stuff around here. What kind of fish bones are beneath us? And how big were they? Really exhale to deepen the twist. Don't crank your neck. Right, so we're not just like twisting the chin to make it feel like we're twisting the torso. We really want the torso to be the initiator of the twist. One more breath. And then unwrap. Bring your right leg back to the ground. Left leg is gonna wrap over the right leg so your left foot is flat on the ground if you can and then your left knee is lifted. If you wanna bend your right knee underneath, you can. Right elbow to left knee, twisting opposite direction. And in this twist, I feel like the excavation comes from the breath, right? These deep, full inhales by default really get into the vertebra. And then when you exhale, it's like, oh, maybe I can twist more now because that inhale kind of created some expansion, some space that you can now compress. And then untwist, coming onto your back, Supta Baddha Konasana. So your soles of your feet are gonna touch. Do what you would like with your arms, just make sure your shoulder blades are tucked underneath you. And we're just spending a moment here, letting the spine find a neutral position. Let your eyes float closed. And I want you in your mind's eye to just 
see, right? See the entire West Texas desert, this Pinto Canyon ranch scene. And if you don't know what it looks like, the best part about your imagination is you are the boss of it. So you decide. Inhale, straighten your legs, bring your arms by your side, settling in for Savasana. Take a moment here, fix the one little thing that's going to bother you, and then actively choose stillness. And take your attention to the space between your eyebrows. And then from that space, I want you to pull kind of your mind's eye out of your body and see your body laying on your yoga mat. And see yourself with compassion And then pull your mind's eye even higher so now you see the roof of your house. And then even higher, you see your house on the block. And then your block in your town. And then even higher, your town in your state. And then shift your mind's eye to the base of the Chinati Mountains. Bring yourself here with me. And as if you're one of those magical airplanes that flies over the canyon, I want you to become aware of the 4,000 feet tall mountains and the deep valleys and the brown dust. the green mesquite and the almost neon cactus with the bright colored flowers noticing the hawks circling overhead and the jackrabbits hopping below and feel the heat of West Texas sun beating down on your skin. Notice the scent of a just opened mesquite after a rain. And then imagine the taste of a cool sip of water on a hot summer day. And in your mind's eye, let yourself explore whatever your version of this far west Texas mountain range is. And like always, I will bring you back into this place and time when we need to close our practice.
in your mind's eye back into your body taking time right hovering over your body seeing yourself settling back in to wherever you are now feeling the weight of your body on your yoga mat circle out your wrists and your ankles and take a big full inhale in and then hold at the top and then blow out like you're blowing out a candle and do that one more time a big full inhale belly expands and then blowing out a candle come to a fetal position on your right side And take a moment here to recognize that you took time to excavate your body. And you celebrated that in the mental space of a 13,000 year history canyon. With your eyes closed, come up to a seated position. Bring your hands to heart center. Root down through the tailbone. Pull high through the crown of the head. And the place in me where resilience and beauty lies acknowledges the place in you where resilience and beauty lies. Together we say, Namaste. Thanks, yogis.